Howdy, I'm Nate, and in this video I'm going to make long reach clamp extensions for this F-style woodworking clamp. Welcome to the narrated version of this video. I also have link in description, a version where I am not narrating it if you just want to relax and watch it. Here I am taking the rivet out of my F-style clamp using this ball peen hammer, using the flat side. And I made that nice and flat rivet there, and I use this punch to knock the rivet through and a second punch to really get it all the way through. This will allow me to disassemble the clamp. The jaws of this clamp are going to be made with poplar. It's a hardwood and it's rather inexpensive. I'm going to get four 20 inch sections and this is a one by two. Now I'm going to glue two 20 inch sections together in order to make one jaw so I have four of them total. And since I'm going to glue them together I need them to sit flush so I'm planing a face on each of them in order to allow all that surface contact for gluing. Before I glue I'm going to cut a dado with my dado stack and this dado is the width of my bar and half of the thickness plus just a little bit in both dimensions, maybe a 32nd in both dimensions. Now for glue up, I'm just using some Type Bond 2. I'm going to make sure to let this set overnight since I'm going to stress these joints. It's good to do this at the end of the day so that way you're not feeling like you're waiting around for it to dry. And here we have our two jaws. So I'm going to clean up the joint here. Um, I'm going to do a, go ahead and do both sides for aesthetic, but you really need the inside joint to be nice and smooth in order to get a lot of surface contact for clamping. And I'm going to add this nut for this all thread I'm going to be using as kind of a screw. And in order to knock out an area for this nut to be inset, I'm going to use a Forstner bit to hog out a lot of the material here. But since the Forstner bit is round and this is a hexagon, I need to use some chisels. The all thread is going to go through the jaw completely. This will be the inside face right here that we're looking at. And in order to hog it out or to drill it out, I'm using this machinist drill. I should have used a Brad Pitt, Brad Point bit. And then I'm going to glue this nut in there securely with some CA glue. Just really pound it in. Make sure it's nice and straight. This can be corrected later and re-glued, which is what I ended up having to do. So the all thread I'm using is 7 16 I think it's a good size for this purpose. And I'm going to go ahead and test whether it's level and plumb right here at a nice right angle from the jaw. And this is after doing my correction, which was just done by bending the all thread inside it. For assembly, I'm going to go ahead and make sure I put the top jaw on first and the second jaw, the bottom jaw in, where the nut is facing in. And I'm going to go ahead and thread the all thread in order to mark where it's going to make contact on the upper jaw. Now because the all thread is really long and it'll take a long time to hand screw it, I'm going to go ahead and make this so that way I can use a electric drill driver for this project. So the mark that I made on that upper jaw is being hogged out a little bit with a smaller Forstner bit. And then I'm going to go ahead and glue a little piece of metal in there. In this case, I'm using a small washer with some CA glue. And I didn't know how to get it in there, but I got really lucky right there and just applied a little bit of pressure. Once again, doing a quick assembly because I need to mark out one more spot, which I could have done previously. 
but that is where this part of the clamp is gonna make contact with the lower jaw. So I'm gonna hog out that area just so that way these two different clamping points have no chance of moving. This one does not need any kind of metal inset on it though. Now both of these jaws are being held together with some hand screw clamps and I am shaving off just enough to make them flush on both sides. For most part this is just aesthetic value. Now the next thing I'm going to be doing is taking some pine. This is a two by two and I'm cutting enough off for me to be able to, blah, to, be able to make a handle for four of my fingers. Now the handle originally was gonna be a hexagon shape. So I was gonna just shave down all four corners and try to make everything equal in width by eye, but then this ended up taking a, a turn at the end, which this step was still valuable for. So I'm just using this cheese grater plane right here to hog off a lot of material quickly. And then I'm gonna go over to a block plane. And the block plane worked really fast as well. Just going back and forth, taking off these shavings. So I have a basic hexagon now, and I decided I'm gonna go ahead and drill right through. And for my 7 16 alt thread, I used a 3 8 inch brad point bit. And this was a perfect size, as you'll see when I thread this onto the all thread. I did my best job of getting this straight, and we'll see it didn't really get perfectly straight through the center, but it was close enough to both be a finished handle now and as well as what I ended up doing with it. So as I'm threading this in there, it's actually cutting threads into the wood, which was really great because it's got a nice, tight, secure feeling to it. Now that I have the threads made inside of this handle, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the all thread and add some glue in order to join these together in a permanent manner. And for glue, I'm just gonna use some all thread. I'm gonna put, or some CA glue. I'm putting some inside and some along the thread itself. And I'm gonna take a few other measures later. See how there's a little nub there at the end? That's for a nut. I'm gonna add it later. Now I decided that I wanted this handle to be round. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a lathe so to speak, for wood turning. And this is a lathe that really only works in this specific application because that all thread is on that piece. And so unless you got all thread through a piece, this method will not work. But I drilled out the threads inside the nut and I made two of those like that in order to give it some stability and I hooked up my drill driver right there on the table and set up a little uh, spot for my chisel to hang off and I went ahead and cut this perfectly round. It took a little bit of time. I had originally tried just using sandpaper but I was getting it smooth, just it was becoming oval shaped still. So then I went after making it perfectly smooth. I went over with sandpaper again, this time making it nice and smooth. Went up to about 400 grit. And then I added some boiled linseed oil. Boiled linseed oil is great because it dries relatively fast. Uh, it's easy to handle and ready to handle pretty much right away. It takes 24 hours to cure though. Now I wanted to add nuts to both the top and the bottom of the handle and I'm using some blue Loctite. I didn't have any red on hand. 
I would have used it if I had it. And this is just to make sure that that handle has no way of moving, as well as to allow me to use the electric drill driver to move the all thread through the clamp itself. I use boil lead and seed oil again on the jaws. Make sure you let your boiled linseed oil rags dry nice and flat so that way they don't have a fire hazard. And here you can see me using the drill driver to drive that all thread through which is much better than doing it by hand. So basically this makes a hand screw type clamp. It's really strong. I was able to get 100 pounds on the scale here and it was holding that pretty good. The wood bent uh, just a little bit, so we lost a little bit of pressure, but then I was able to retighten it. I got it up to 120 off camera. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe to support my channel.